Hi everyone, um, I'm really excited to be here and welcome to this webinar by the Product School, where we talk about how to use your background to be a better PM. And I picked this topic, uh, basically, there, basically there are two tracks here that I want to talk about. Um, one is I hear uh, people, specifically people who want to get into product uh, management. Um, and I, I hear so many people talk about kind of their, their backgrounds in a very uncoherent way. Um, I often see people seeing it, their background filled with the twists and turns and, and detours as something that is a disadvantage. I think that um, there's still a notion out there that there is like a very direct route into product management, which is through um, a technical role, which is so much true. You probably know this. There's so many really great talks about this out there, really good articles too, that that's really, really not true. Um, but because that notion still kind of lives, um, I feel like sometimes people struggle to tell their story in a way where they see um, their background as an advantage rather than a disadvantage. And I want to, I want you to learn how to see it as an advantage because it is, it's going to help you so much in your career as a product manager. Um, and then the other track is um, that I really believe that understanding and storytelling, the two pieces, the two core pieces that we'll uh, discuss today are the most important skills uh, for a product manager. Um, so mastering this at a very early stage in your career um, or, or really at any stage, uh, just, just growing it and nurturing it will help you so much um, as a product manager. So let's dive in. Um, but before we do that, I did not forget to introduce myself. I kind of wanted to take this as an opportunity to already maybe show you a little bit about um, how I stitch my background uh, to be uh, a coherent story. Because I have kind of a, um, uh, a, a little bit of a complicated background as well. And I talked to a lot of PMs who share this uh, experience um, that I feel that I did not know one, uh, one, what I wanted to be when I, I grew up. Um, and I had many interests in many different things. And I saw that as a really big disadvantage uh, compared to, um, you know, my, my buddies who, who knew exactly what they wanted to do and they just went for it. Uh, they were really determined. There was only one thing that interested them and they went for it. And I've always looked at that and thought that I... It's, it's something that I should feel, but I don't really have it. And I had to wait until I got into product management to understand that it's a really useful thing to have multiple interests as long as you learn how to use them and how to talk about them. So I am currently a product manager at Spotify um, where I work at the creator side of the business. Um, I basically work on products and tooling for labels, um, and I absolutely love it. I think it's a job that's very well suited uh, my my profile. It's uh, I work on a customer user facing products, and uh, and it's in the music industry, which is a crazy place. But I absolutely love it, um, and I spend my my time and uh, my my background is uh, around a lot of musicians growing up and and when when I was a teenager so this also very well suits my my interest too before Spotify I worked in Amsterdam for a startup called Impraise uh, this was a b2b SaaS startup and I got into product management there I started out in customer success and customer support and that whole experience was really important for me to develop that core understanding for, um, for user problems, basically. And to this day, I really recommend all product managers, wherever you start working, spend a day or two in, uh, with, with, your, with your users and your customers, if you can. 
Um, if you cannot, then spend uh, a, a little bit of time with those people who are in these customer and user facing roles. Um, you'll learn so much and you'll be able to put yourself in the shoes of your customers and users so much better. Um, but also this, uh, this experience at a startup really um, taught me how to work with different parts of the business. It taught me how to uh, prioritize because there's a lot of prioritizing going on in the startup that doesn't really have resources um, and many more things that, uh, that nurtured me and grew me or kind of like sometimes I feel like rocketed me to do product management. Um, before that, I uh, co-founded an organization uh, that offered um, psychological services, so counseling, coaching to organizations and uh, individuals, um, uh, as well as schools. Uh, we had like group sessions, and our mission was to make mental health awareness uh, uh, and, and, and coaching and, and help very accessible to people. Um, and uh, and kind of uh, make that part of people's lives. Um, that experience was was amazing. I, I think it came very early in my career, um, but it uh, helped me to understand the struggles of entrepreneurship and uh, and to I mean you'll not prioritize more than when you're running your own business. Um, you'll not feel the pain uh you know to the, the date of the day-to-day -day more than when you're running your own business and you're not wearing you know as many hats as as when you're running your business elsewhere so um i did a lot of the branding the design uh obviously a lot of the the, the business uh facing uh problems that we need needed to solve um and then at the same time i worked as a psychologist um, and uh, and worked with clients a lot. And my background is in psychology. I, I graduated in, in Hungary as a psychology uh, psychologist, and I worked with um, with clients and started my, my career there. Um, psychology um, is one of those things that are very easy, I think, to position as um, as a kind of a highway to to product management because it will teach you how to talk to, to people. Um, it will uh, teach you how to empathize a lot uh, with your users and, and customers and, um, and to kind of have that curiosity as a mindset and to relate. Um, so that was uh, a very relevant experience for me uh, leading up to product management. But I also had a detour to, uh, to art school. I studied as a photographer for, for two years. And, uh, and while I think that that's a good example that someone could see as, okay, that was too, you know, maybe wasted years, but I, I don't see it that way at all. It helped me to develop a lot of my kind of vis visual, um, uh, my visual culture, basically, and it helps me to see details, it, uh, it helps me, it gives me an eye for composition. Um, so I think this uh, specifically is a good example of, of uh, how to stitch that into your story, you know, something that is maybe at the first glance, it doesn't really belong there. Um, and in my free time, I love reading. I am obsessed with uh, cycling. I also built a track bike. Um, I'm sailing in the summer. I am super into music. I love independent movies and also photography, obviously. And I'm just like flashing these um, uh, just so that, you know, you get to know me a little bit better, but also because um, there are so many things from your hobbies that you can pick out and stitch into your story. For example, music. I mean, music was a hobby and interest for me uh, for for many years before I joined Spotify, and now uh, I think it helps me to uh, to connect and 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 to stay enthusiastic about what we're doing in the in the company mission. Um, so I think that uh, your story and the data points of your story can come from very many and and sometimes kind of unexpected places. Um, do not be scared to use these um, from wherever it comes from. Um, it's, it's all part of who you are. And 
And, you know, if there's like one core message here that I want you to understand and grasp and, and uh, really connect with is do, do not feel like anything is wasted. Try to use everything that you've done in your career and your life and your education and, and, and your experiences. So uh, obviously, uh, we'll talk about how to how to write your story up. And then um, in this example that I just gave about my story, um, I, I did that in a way that I kind of understand who the audience is. I mean, obviously, unfortunately, um, you don't sit in front of me so that I really see uh, who is who's really listening to this, um, this talk. But, um, but I suspect that you want to understand my career and you want to know how I got to work at Spotify. So that's kind of the story that I picked out and assembled here. Um, there are many other things about me uh, that I don't think is relevant right now, but in other cases, I would be able to use them. So very important point to understand who your audience is and kind of put your story together in a way that it tells some information that's relevant to them. Cool. So I mentioned that the two core pillars that we'll uh, discuss today is understanding and storytelling. Uh, and then obviously we'll talk a little bit about how to apply all these things that uh, you've learned, what are the uh, different areas where you can apply understanding and storytelling. So let's uh, dive into the understanding part. Um, why is understanding important? Um, you might ask. And this wouldn't be a serious presentation if it didn't have a serious quote. Uh, this one is from Socrates. Um, to know thyself is the beginning of wisdom. And I honestly, truly agree with this. Um, you cannot work with, uh, with things that you, you can't understand. And you definitely cannot sell something that you, you don't understand. So when we think about those two tracks, so one, when we said that we're, uh, we're going to focus on people who are starting out in the product management career, um, and then people who are already in there, and it's, uh, they, you can, they can use um, understanding and storytelling to strengthen their skills. This is more relevant to, to maybe the first group when you're telling your story uh, to a recruiter, for example. Um, if, you, if you don't understand your story, if you don't understand the different elements of it, um, I can guarantee you'll get a question about your background, especially if you have a colorful background. And that's, a, uh, that's basically a ball that's like thrown up in the air for you that you can grab and say that, yes, that I did that because of this and I learned that from it. And I, I think it's a brilliant uh, and effective technique to, to use him um, when you're applying to, to a job. Um, and so let's talk about how to practice the, getting this understanding. Um, I, I'd like to really dig into, uh, first and foremost, to, to, uh, into your values. And I say this because um, our values guide us and, and help us to um, to understand who we really are and how we behave in different situations and what's core and important to us in life. Um, and uh, I, uh, I wanted to emphasize this one because me personally, I applied to Spotify because my personal values overlap uh, largely with the company values. So some of these values like uh, playfulness, sincerity, um, or, or collaboration, uh, passion. These are values that are very important to me as well. And I thought that, you know, knowing that about myself and seeing a com company that puts it in its flags, I thought that that's going to be a good idea for me to go for. And it was because I could see how um, uh, these, you know, the, the, the important things overlap and, and then you know what the, you're, you're at the right place. Um, I want you to dig into your career and education choices, and I really urge you to see these as, um, as you know, part of your story rather than um, waste of times or, or, or something that you did uh, before you really found out that you wanted to be a product manager and, and you see that now as, as a waste of time and you could have, uh, you know, come into product management so much earlier. No, you couldn't have, and or maybe you could have, but you, you would have missed out on so much uh, that you can use from those different parts of your life and your career and education choices. 
Um, so I really, really urge you to unwrap these and, and try to understand why you made these choices and what you learned from them. Um, and even if you think that something that you did was, was really, really a mistake, there's no way around it. There's always so much um, uh, learnings in, 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 in mistakes, obviously. And, you know, even if you think about like uh, product development principles and uh, the fail fast uh, principle and, and the, the uh, you know, uh, fail, uh, the fail fast and learn, um, there's always that learning part that is core to failing because that's what we do as humans. We fail and we learn from them and we should, um, we should you know, know better next time and we should kind of, um, uh, you know, it should impact our future. Um, the next question that I think is uh, important and could help you to understand uh, uh, kind of your background and what you want in life is uh, your role models or people that you look up to and, I, you know, I want to understand why. And this is, by the way, also a question that you could get in an interview. So it's really good to be prepared uh, about it. Um, the next one and the next two is goals and your dreams. So goals are more specific things. So I don't know, two to five years out. What do you want to accomplish? What do you, where do you want to be two to five years? Um, and then your dreams, what are your aspirations? Like, what are your wildest dreams? How do you want to change the world? It's, it's so important, you know, to, to know that about yourself. It will guide you and it will make uh, your, uh, your efforts uh, more concentrated and, and uh, more targeted. Um, so, yeah, these are questions that you could use to just like pull out a pen and paper or your notes and, and do a little bit of uh, self-discovery through these. Um, and I wanted to give you a technique that um, I use when I worked as a psychologist. A lot of psychologists use this, actually. This is kind of your timeline uh, or your life, life timeline, basically. Um, uh, you just like draw a line and then you mark all the most important, most relevant experiences that you had. So this could be anything. This could be any experiences that you had that you think had a transformative or important impact on your life. Um, and uh, that will already get you in the mindset of, uh, of the storytelling part that we'll talk about in a minute. Um, and what you can also do that will help you to understand how these different uh, things impacted you is to draw a line on top of it uh, based on how you felt about these things. And that will help you to identify whether you think these were good choices or bad choices or and then, you, you know, when you have like a bad choice, you can look into like what happens, what did you learn? How did that impact your choices later or your events uh, later in your life? Um, and then another resource that I actually recommend you to do is the Myers-Briggs uh, Myers -Briggs personality type. Um, very widespread, super popular. Um, you can access it through 16personalities.com uh, and you'll recognize it probably uh, uh, because uh, a lot of people use it. So just don't take it as a script, don't take it super seriously, but it will help you to understand uh, your uh, different uh, pillars for your behavior and, and, uh, and hopefully put you in, uh, in a better position in terms of like understanding yourself. Um, cool, so now that we did some, um, you know, discovering uh, in the understanding phase, um, which obviously takes a lot of time and take your time with it, um, but when you have that, and I called this previously data points, um, uh, but these are basically the learnings that you'll, you'll have uh, about yourself. And then you can stitch that into a story. And, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, look, we'll talk about uh, practicing storytelling. So <clears throat> why is storytelling important? Um, storytelling is a tool for your audience to understand, empathize, and form connections with you through your story. I argue that storytelling is one of the most important um, tools that anyone has because uh, as humans, we connect with each other, uh, to each other uh, through stories and a good story has a really big impact. Um, uh, storytelling will help you to uh, create and, and, and make your, your narrative uh, crystal clear. And you would want that narrative to be crystal clear when you are applying for jobs, for example, when you will tell the story over and over and over again, 
the different tweaks, uh, obviously, understanding your audience. So if you apply to a job that is very different from the previous one, don't tell the same, uh, the same story, pick out different things from, from, uh, from your background. Let's talk about how to practice that storytelling. There are basically three um, different questions here that you can uh, that you can ask when you have that story to kind of like double check um, if if your story is uh, comprehensive. And these are also things to keep in mind when you're forming that story. Um, so first off, uh, who do you want to influence through the story? Again, understand your audience. Um, and then digging a little bit deeper, what do you want them to feel and what do you want them to do? So talking about hiring um, uh, or you know interviewing, you want them to hire you, right? Like that's a <laughs> that's your goal. That's why you're telling them your story. Um, you will you will get them uh, to to do that um, uh, through tweaking your story in a way where you're like heading towards that goal. So I want you to have that end goal in mind and work towards it. And you'll find that um, uh, making sure that they empathize with you and and they they understand the choices that uh, that you made, um, so they feel. Um, will help them to get to where you want them to be. Um, and just to, uh, just to call out a few things here, when somebody tells a story, the audience uh, very implicitly, like this is kind of a passive aggressive question, but, um, but uh, implicitly everybody asks that basically, why should I care? Why is this relevant to me? Why am I listening to to um, this, uh, this story, why, what's the, why, what's the relevance to me? Um, so keep that in mind and make it relevant uh, for, uh, to the people that you're talking to. Um, and um, I think that this is one of the hardest things to do is to simplify and, and uh, make your story, story clear. And you'll probably need to do that over and over <laughs> um, because Simplifying is one of the hardest things to do because you have to cut things out of it. You'll have to make sure that it's not bloated, it's straightforward, it's simple to understand, it heads towards that goal that you want to want to achieve. Um, it's a lot of lot of work, and you know, don't be scared if you don't get it right uh, for the first time. Um, and, and you don't need to have like these, you know, super well prepared like <laughs> stories that you can pull out. But uh, but it's good to understand these like tracks that you tell your story um, or, or using or kind of like on these tracks. And I want to stop for a second here and pull in the other track that we talked in the in the beginning about, which is uh, skills that you use as a product manager. So. I dare to say in the beginning that understanding and storytelling are two tools that product managers use a lot and that one of them or two of the most important uh, tools uh, of a product manager toolkit. Um, and I'd like you to think a little bit about how you can use storytelling uh, in product management or what are the areas that storytelling is being used in product management. Um, and uh, if you think about something like a strategy or, you know, heading towards a vision or maybe putting together a business case, um, maybe a data story, um, you know, understanding what you're trying to tell, or how, you, how you understand the data and what the data tells you, that's a story. Um, or even like, um, you know, a good product brief is a very well-written story. Um, there are so many core uh, moments when you'll use storytelling or you already use storytelling um, in your uh, uh, career as a PM. And it uh, perfecting them and perfecting these like understanding and storytelling um, uh, capabilities will help you to be a better PM. Let's so talk about this a little bit. Um, when in in this section, which is <laughs> talking about uh, applying what uh, we've uh, learned here. So again, um, just iterating on uh, the the track number one. When you become a PM, so when you apply for jobs, uh, you'll use storytelling, and you should use understanding to form those stories. 
Um, I also uh, think that it's a very useful technique to uh, identify the blind spots and kind of the uh, growth opportunities in your career. Um, and uh, uh, really having like a, a 360 view of your story and, and your career and your entire like life, you know, leading up to this point when you really just want to be a, a, a PM will help you to identify that, uh, what are the areas that you still need to develop in. Um, and then the last one is, um, uh, when you seek mentorship, I, I really urge you to reach out with a clear goal in mind. I get a lot of uh, questions and a lot of people reach out to me asking for a chat or, you know, uh, just asking for mentorship. And it was challenge them to, you know, to, to really tell me what they want to get out of it. Um, this will make it so much better for you. And I, I would even think that you will get like more results when you reach out to people asking for mentorship, when you tell them what you want, how you think your story um, uh, is developing, how, like what are the parts in your story that you think um, maybe touch or, or is relevant to that person that you're asking help from? Um, and and what, do you, what do you want to get out of these conversations uh, with them? And then the second track, which is uh, when you're already a PM and you want to use these skills, um, I, I'm 100% sure that this will allow you to become a better PM and you will be a better product if you master the skills of understanding um, and storytelling. So uh, un the understanding, I call them muscles. So the understanding muscles you uh, strengthen and you use a lot when you want to understand core user needs, when you want to empathize with your customers, when you're really getting in the shoes of, of your users. And that is a crucial number one rule uh, in order to, to build uh, good products for your users. So um, a lot of resources out there talk about this actually, so I don't really want to get into it, but um, uh, the, the, for example, the brilliant jobs to be done framework when you're really mapping out uh, uh, user needs, user pains, user jobs, like these are all relying on that empathy that you will need to have, or you you have you you need to have um, as a PM. So uh, practicing the understanding at such an early stage in your career will help you so much um, to to be a better PM and be a better product. And then, the other, uh, and then on the other hand, um, the storytelling muscles you'll, uh, you'll use, as we mentioned, the strategy or getting buy-in from your stakeholders or your leadership group. Um, you'll also use it a lot when you're motivating your team. You'll need to tell uh, your, uh, a good story to your team to get them on board and to make sure that they motivate it towards a goal that you're getting to. There are all these uh, 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 very core uh, tools that you'll use that's basically all relying on storytelling and and perfecting that storytelling. Um, so these are super important uh, techniques that uh, will help you to to be better at your career and you, you, you it will help you to build your career as well. Um, so I just wanted to stop for a second and talk a little bit about imposter syndrome. Um, and in case you haven't heard about it, uh, just Google it. Um, imposter syndrome is when you feel that everybody around you is more capable and they know so much more about something uh, that, uh, than you and you are just an imposter basically among them. And, um, and it's... Um, I think that more and more people start to talk about it, but it's still not that so much out there. Um, and I will want you to know that everybody, everybody feels imposter syndrome at once and at one time in in, uh, in their career, at least one time. Um, and uh, and so I just wanted to uh, to share that understanding and storytelling uh, helped me a lot uh, uh, when I. I try to fight the imposter syndrome because it helps me to kind of get my strong footed, you know, like, like that solid uh, foot on the ground and, and to understand that 
this is my story. It led up to this moment. These are the things that I can use in this role. These are the learnings that I have. Um, and these are the things that I still don't understand. And that's OK. I can talk about this uh, to two people and get mentorship and be very specific what I want mentorship about. Um, so I think imposter syndrome and, and everything basically like anxiety related becomes very overwhelming when you um, when you don't really understand it, when you, you cannot really like put a little like, like barricades around it and say that this is it and nothing more. Um, so I also urge you to, to practice understanding the source and to fight imposter syndrome. So just to wrap up, a quick word about um, diversity and how important that is in product teams. Um, I also in Spotify, there are so many uh, product managers in many, many, many uh, different backgrounds. And, uh, you know, I talked with, uh, with people who came from, um, uh, I don't know, uh, photojournalism or people who studied a lot of uh, music, uh, obviously, um, studied a lot. Of, there are a lot of people who studied music um, and there are my teacher, sorry, my manager used to be a teacher and that's such an important skill set. I think it's brilliant uh, when it comes to product management. Um, there are so many different backgrounds and I, I want you to know that that will help you uh, to to build better products uh, and to use that kind of team knowledge to have different perspectives and utilize those different perspectives and really just like talk to people, you know, uh, listen to their stories because everybody has a unique story and in product management that is such an important background to have and urge people to have like, urge people to share their stories and, and share how they uh, use those different skills that they, they gained from those like very, you know, colorful backgrounds. So thank you so much for, for listening in. Um, and I hope you found this useful. Um, again, uh, just understanding storytelling and uh, practice and, um, and this is going to be great for you and your career. Thank you so much.